In this video, I will introduce two source control concepts that you'll need when you use Git and GitHub when working with the team. Those two concepts are branches and pull requests. So let's start with branches and then pull requests will make a little bit more sense. Let's start by opening the same client intake flow repository that we were using for the last video. So let's go to my GitHub account and in my repositories, let's search for client intake flow. And let's grab the URL by going to this code button here and clicking this icon, which will copy the URL to the clipboard. Open Visual Studio Code. Go to the source control icon here and say clone repository. We'll paste that URL in here, hit enter. It'll ask us where to put the files. And as always, we put them in the SRC directory. And yes, we will open the repository in Visual Studio Code. So here we go. Here are the files from the repository that are now on our local computer, and they represent the client intake flow that we made in the last video. OK, so a branch. Uh, right now, well, right now Visual Studio Code is uh, doing its best to scan for the Git information. So once that comes through, uh, I'll show you that we are already using a branch. We right, right now we're using the main branch. Uh, it used to be called, you'll sometimes see it called master branch, but they changed the naming of it recently. So as Visual Studio Code processes the fact that this is a repository, it now says down here, main. So this tells you what branch you're on. Now that we want to work on multiple branches, that matters to us. So what we can do is go here and say branch, create branch. And it'll ask us for a name for the branch. So we'll say, uh, we'll call it first feature branch. Now you see down here, it now says first feature branch instead of main. Now, what that buys us, or what that allows us to do is create a copy of our entire repository under a name. Now we can switch back and forth between the main copy and the first feature branch copy. And I'll show you what I mean. Let's go to our file view and let's just modify the readme file. And let's copy, let's get rid of this. And let's say um, this is the first feature branch. It is totally different and the main branch. So we save that. Now if I go and commit this, if I add this readme change to our commit, if I stage this change in the commit and say updated the readme to uh, reflect the feature branch. Doesn't really make sense, but it doesn't matter. So we commit that. Now, I can go back. If I want to go back to what's on GitHub in the main branch, or what's on my local computer in the main branch, I can click down here and select the main branch. And now my readme file is back to what it was when we started. So I can switch back and forth on my computer between two versions of the same file. You see that? First feature branch, first feature branch. I change to main, now it says main down here, and now it's the original uh, readme contents. Okay, great. So when you're working by yourself, this is still amazing. If you want to try something out for a while uh, and you want to be able to go back and forth between versions, like say you're trying a new um, web design on one of your HTML pages and you don't necessarily want to commit to it yet, but you want to try some things out, it's great to create a branch go work on it, commit that branch, and then switch back to your main branch um, to have your more permanent copy of your files. So great. So how does this help you work with a team? Well, when you work with a team, typically you will have restrictions on your branch. So if I go into the settings of my client intake flow, and I go to branches, 
Right now, I don't have any branch protection rules. So what that means is anyone on my team can just push changes directly into the, to the main branch, which is my source of truth of my code. And we don't want that. We, don't, we wanna have some controls in place. We wanna be able to uh, have rules for when something goes into the main branch because that branch needs to be protected from uh, mistakes, from um, malicious code, from, from just anything we don't want in it. So we're gonna add a branch protection rule to it. So this branch name pattern, it's just saying, what branches, what branch names do you want to protect? And in the simplest case, you just type the name of your branch. In this case, we just want to protect our main main branch. So we're going to require a pull request before merging, which is the most important one. That just means that you can't push changes directly to the main branch. It says when, it, when enabled, all commits must be made to a non-protected branch and submitted via a pull request before they can be merged into a branch. So that's just saying in our case, any branch is not main. You can push changes to any branch that's not main. And if you want to put those changes into main, you'll need to create a pull request and merge those changes into main. And I'll show you how to do that. So in this case, we're not going to require approvals because I don't have a team on GitHub, so we can't, I can't show you that. But we are going to uh, go down here and say, do not allow bypassing the above settings because I'm an administrator on this repo. It won't block me if I don't check this box. So I select, select those two boxes and I say, create rule. Now I have a branch protection rule on the main branch. Now what that means is that if I go into my main branch here and I say, this is my attempt to make a change to the main branch. I save that, stage the change per commit, or stage the change in the commit, and say, attempting to push directly to main, which is a no-no. And I sync changes, which will perform a push up to GitHub. Say, yes, I want to push. It won't work. It also won't give you a very useful message. It will say, can't push refs to remote, try running pull first to integrate your changes. That's not really the problem. If we go to the uh, show command output or the open git log really, but show command output has a nicer message, I think. We can see that when we try to do the git push from the sync changes button, this sync changes will perform a git push. Uh, we have this error that says, Protected branch update failed. Changes must be made through a pull request. So we've made it so we cannot make changes directly to our main branch. We must first push a second branch or what's called a feature branch, and then make a pull request to merge the changes from that feature branch into the main branch. So let's do that instead. So if I take that same set of changes, I can now create a new branch. So I can say, I can do it from here by clicking this and say, create a new branch. Or I can go into the source control icon here, hit this three dot menu and go to branch, create branch. Or I can go to the command palette and say, create branch. You can type git, all the git commands show up right here. So I can say, create branch and we'll say, um, more readme changes. So now those changes are already committed on the more readme changes branch. So if I say publish branch now, that will publish the more readme changes branch to GitHub. It takes just a second. We actually don't get a, 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 a nice message saying it's committed, but I'm pretty sure it made it up there. So let's go back to the main view of the client intake flow. And you can see up here, it says more readme changes has recent pushes. So that means uh, that branch is now on GitHub. 
So if you look at the branches here, you can see there's main and there's more readme changes. And if we go back to the code view, this drop down, there's main and there's more readme changes. So I can actually switch between the two versions here as well. And I can say, look at the, uh, the readme and it says, this is my attempt to make a change to the main branch. And if I go to the main branch, I can see that it says just the original readme, which is this is a repo for a YouTube tutorial. Okay, so now how do we get the changes from our feature branch, the more readme changes branch into our main branch? Well, we click this compare and pull request button. And here you can add some some context and some flavor for your teammates so that when they're reviewing it, uh, they know why you're making the changes and things like that. So in this case, uh, we are just demonstrating the usage of a pull request. And we can say create pull request. And at this point, this is where you would send notifications out to your teammates to go review the change to make sure everything's fine and it's going to be a change we want to put into production or into the main branch. Uh, we could also put controls like you have to have a successful deployment and run your automated tests before you can merge the changes into the main branch, but that's a more advanced thing that hopefully one of your um, more senior developers will set up for you. Okay, so it says here this branch has no conflicts, which means no one else is, uh, when you merge the changes, they won't conflict. We won't worry about uh, merges right now uh, when, there's, when there are conflicts, because that's a whole other subject. But for right now, we can ignore that and say merge pull request. Confirm merge. Okay, so now the changes from our feature branch have been merged into our main branch. So if we go back to the code, we can see that in the main, the readme has been updated with the new text. So that's kind of the flow of how you make changes. You create a feature branch, you make your changes, you push your changes, you make a pull request to have those changes merged into your main. And then when your team or your automated processes think it's okay to merge, your changes get merged into main and life goes on and you repeat the process. And that's really all you need. Uh, from the first video where you set up your environment to the second video where you learn how to pull files out of the Salesforce org using a manifest file uh, and add them to Git and then GitHub to now where you know how to create a branch, lock your, well, lock your main branch, create a feature branch, push that feature branch, and then merge the changes from that feature branch to your main branch. Uh, I think you're all set. Thanks again for watching.